video. Okay, maybe only Professor Han will wish it <laughs> for the APL data set. Um, these are the variables we are going to use to visualize our data. And uh, compare with the raw data, we didn't use um, the symbols because symbol is just the unique identifier of each option. And uh, we don't use spire and uh, abstract date, but instead we create a new variable called date diff. It just uh, spire date subtracted by the abstract date to maintain the information in the raw data. And this is the uh, visualization of 2D of PCA. And then we can see from the picture uh, with the increasement of PC1, the strike increase a lot and uh, the last bid and the ask decrease a lot, as well as uh, percentage change decrease a lot. And the, with the increasement of PC2, the volume and number interest increase a lot and the, the day difference and uh, the change doesn't uh, contribute a lot to PC. This is a 3D visualization of PCA. Okay, in the Tisney part, I think Tisney uh, does a good job to cluster the data because you can see some clusters in the 2D pictures and uh, we can um, distinguish the low imp implied vo volatility from high implied volatilities in this 2D picture. And uh, for the sparse PCA, most of the variables are parallel to PC1 or PC2, and uh, it makes it more cl uh, it makes it clear for us to detect how how our variables contribute to each PC. For the LLE part, mm. <laughs> it's very hard to explain. Okay, I'll just leave it there. I think kernel PCA with RBF method really did a good job in um, exploiting the data. We can see there is, a, you can see there, we can draw a line there to exploit the low implied volatility from high implied volatility. Cosine does a bad job, it's just a circle. And the kernel PCA with polykernel matrix also did a good job to explain the data. That's just like the uh, conclusions I mentioned before. So uh, for the option data part, uh, there are three data set and we only use the all all the option data data set to do this uh, to do this presentation, and first we just uh, compare uh, compute the five, first five PCs of the kernel PCA the PCA kernel PCA and the sparse PCA, and the, there are five PCs list here. Uh, we can see that from uh, for PC one the ask bid and option price and stock price they contribute a lot. And they have a positive relation with P, uh, with each other, and uh, for PC two, it's uh, only the stock price and strike price. These two contribute a lot, and they are they are positive with with, with each other, which is very reasonable. And um, also the variance is listed on the right. And uh, uh, for kernel PCA, uh, I think uh, the PC the PCs for kernel PCs. Uh, is the eigenvector of kernel matrix. So the length is the length of the vector is uh, the number of the observa observations. So it's very very long. So it's, I think it doesn't make sense to compare with the PCA uh, about uh, with, with the PCs of, of PCA. So we only list the variance here uh, on, on the right. Um, and the sparse PCA uh, focus on uh, just give give us the, the important information about how um, a, a variable can contribute to each PC, and it's very clear to say that to see that the ask bid and option price contribute a lot to PC one, and the stock price and strike price contribute a lot to PC two. And uh, uh, this is the realization part of, of 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 the PCs of PCA kernel PCA and sparse PCA, 
and uh, for kernel PCA, we have a lot of uh, the, the, the the PC is the, the the length of the PC is very long. It's the number of the observations. So we have a lot of points in the kernel PCA plot, and um, we um, visualize our new data, the score of the data um, by the first uh, and two PCs respect uh, respectively. Uh, from the from the PCA plot, we can see that uh, it's clear to see that the stock price and thread price um, have a big contribute to PC2, and um, the the red points represent the, the high implied volatility, and the low the, the, the blue points uh, represent the Im low implied volatility. And uh, this is the plot for kernel PCA. We we have. We plot three. We use three methods to plot kernel PCA: the RBF, the polynomial, and the uh, cosine. Uh, we can see that cosine plot is looks like a math, but a mess. But actually, when we do regression part, cosine has a good result. Okay, so about this part PCA, we see that in the two uh, two D visualization, uh, uh, we see clearly that we have increase uh, in the second sparse PC. We see that we have increase in the second sparse with the second sparse PC. We have a, a, um, an increase in the strike price and in the stock price, uh, and about the first uh, PC of so SPAR PC, we see that with an increase of it, we have an increase in the option price uh, and time maturity. About the Disney, we see that Disney does a good job with the clustering part uh, in this in the three in the 2D visualization and 3D. Uh, this is the LE part and the ISO map. Um, Basically, we think that Disney is the one that does the better uh, job about the clustering, uh, and that the kernel PC with the poly method that we saw before um, does a bad job for clustering. And uh, we only presented uh, these graphs for the all option data, just, but when we compare the three data set, the call. Uh, option data, the boot option data, uh, the all option data, we see that PC, uh, currently PCA and SPAR PC have similar uh, job in the three data sets. And about the LE and ISO map, the plots are really different. About the regression, uh, we see we have all the results. First, when we compare the results without the reduction uh, and with and after the reduction about the gradient boosting, we see that the PCA and the kernel PC with a cosine are the only ones that do a better job uh, with the gradient boosting regression when we compare it uh, before and after the reduction. And also using all the components, I mean, using the number of, of the total components that is nine in this case, with when we are analyzing the all option data. And about the random forest, we can see the table that the only one that is doing a best improvement is the PC, and the kernel uh, PC with the cosine is just improving a little bit the all the MSE. And when we analyze the supervised vector machine, we see that none of the reduction methods are improving the results. And basically these are the conclusions I just mentioned before. Ah, what did I say? Uh, my part is Project C. And here is our general solution uh, for problem A. We first transform the data and scatter the point and add labels for each point. For problem B, we first build a function to calculate the used leading distance and sort the results and find the top five pairs. Uh, for problem C, it uh, seems a little bit like problem A, but add a step like uh, analyze the results into six dimensions. Uh, 
here is our data set description uh, and here is uh, we made a heat map of our data set uh, the factor here shows the correlation of each features. The factors that have a positive correlation with money used are tuition, graduation rate, SAT, GPA, endowment. The factors that have the negative correlation with money use are loan rate, endowment access ratio, and public or private. Here is uh, original data visualization. Uh, and we made PCA 2D visualization, SPCA. Uh, we can see that uh, in PCA, uh, it clearly shows the outliers of, of, of these universities. They are very clearly shows. And for SPCA, this seems uh, outliers, but I don't think they represent a good result. Uh, Tisney seems a little bit fair to show the outliers. Maybe we didn't find a good solution. Uh, solution. Uh, here, LIE, I think, clearly shows the outliers like this, Harvard, Stanford, like this, but compared with Twitter information, uh, with uh, compared with without Twitter information, we think the Twitter follows is a little bit noisy data for the analytics uh, because sometimes a good university maybe don't have too many uh, Twitter follows. It doesn't mean anything, I think, we think. Here is our 3D visualization.